afternoon edition of the Tulsa Tribune landed on doorsteps with the headline, NAB Negro for Attacking Girl in an Elevator. The same edition of the newspaper, distributed widely among the white population of Tulsa, supposedly contained an editorial written by the publisher, Richard Lloyd-Jones, titled, To Lynch Negro Tonight. That same night, a mob of whites and a mob of blacks gathered at the courthouse where Dick Rowland, a black man who had been accused of attacking a white woman, was being held. Someone fired a gun. Mayhem ensued. The Oklahoma National Guard was called. After midnight on June 1st, fires were set in the afternoon. Of the Churches, barbershops, movie theaters, and ice cream parlors, and the offices of the Tulsa Star, the city's leading black newspaper, were reduced to ash. By the next morning, Greenwood lay in ruins. Most of the surviving black residents had either fled the city or were being held in detention centers. They began living in tents. The official death count was 39, but an NAACP official thought as many as 250 Tulsans had been killed. I'm too young to marry. Greenwood had been called Black Wall Street. It was a wealthy, thriving area, fueled by Tulsa's oil boom. Greenwood's residents read the Tulsa Star, published by the fiery A.J. Smitherman. Smitherman never missed a chance to rail against injustice and racism in print, especially lynching. He often rushed to the scene when lynchings were threatened, and intervened directly in addition to reporting on the event. You push me, read one of his early headlines, and I'll push back. Smitherman also wrote about the Greenwood Society ladies and ran ads for the local confectionery. He crafted a publication that advocated for equal treatment for all American citizens, and he provided a picture of the black community as a full, diverse society. Members of Greater Tulsa, however, read of Greenwood in a different way. Richard Lloyd Jones frequently referred to Greenwood as Little Africa and Nigger Town, and in the end, it was his view that mattered. After the race riots, a white grand jury indicted Smitherman for inciting the riot. He and his family fled and ended up in New York. While Greenwood became known for blues and jazz music, it never regained its old vitality as an independent neighborhood. The race riots are largely forgotten. After a report, a state-mandated commission found that reparations were not necessary. It handed out a few college scholarships and established a memorial site. Today, a black stone inscribed with names is almost all that is left of Greenwood.